I am the Holy Spirit. He, he is not, you know, it's how I'm referring to him. He's not something, he's not an it, he's a he's a personality. Like I shared last week, and, and you'll hear this, it, we believe in the Trinity. We believe in God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is one of the Godheads of that, that being, that entity who we know is God. And he, and he is the one who does many, many things. He's referred to many times as maybe the Spirit of God. And, and uh, But he's very, very vital to the life of us as believers. Like I said, he's the one who entered when, when, the, when Christ was crucified. He was laying in the tomb. That day he re resurrected on that Sunday morning, it was the Holy Spirit who entered into him and gave him life again to make him live life eternal, to live for eternal. So the Holy Spirit is very vital to our faith. It's very... He's very vital to our walk. So, and like I said, the last several weeks I dealt with, first off, I dealt with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Talking about the infilling and how that is God's gift. God desires for every believer. He desires for every, everyone who follows Jesus Christ to be filled, to be infilled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now that is a separate act from salvation. You do, you, do not, you do not receive the infilling of the Spirit, the fullness of the Spirit at salvation. This is a separate act. We, we can see that throughout the book of Acts. I went over that, so you can go review that message to see what I was talking about there. I'm talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then last week I dealt with the fruit of the Spirit. And I told you the fruit of the Spirit is something that becomes evident. It's something that's evident in the, in the life of a believer. Now the fruit of the Spirit is not the result of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but it's a result of salvation. But without the fruit of the Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost cannot happen in your life. The gifts and the powers of the Holy Ghost cannot truly be affected in your life without the fruit. So that's what we talked a little bit about last week. And today, I want to discuss for you a little while the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not going to go with them in detail today. Later on sometime we may do a series of messages where we go into what the gifts are and how they operate and all that. But today, I just want to give you an overview. I want to give you the idea and the thought that with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you should desire spiritual gifts. As a follower of Jesus Christ, these things that, that, that Paul begins to declare in Corinthians chapter 12, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, these are things that we should desire. These gifts are, are, are things that we should desire in our lives as followers of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to get into that a little bit this morning. Here's what it says in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. It says, let love be your highest goal. Anybody know what was right before this chapter? 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, the chapter 11. We, we dealt with that a little bit last week. 